Welcome to our daily devotion. The Methodist Church of Barbados invites you to sing, pray, and worship with us as we declare God's glory and celebrate His mighty acts. our sovereign lord how majestic is your name in all the earth we lift up our eyes to you O god from where our help comes we praise and worship you O god because you are worthy of our praise we glorify your mighty name god we acknowledge that in spite of the fact that you are always faithful to us we often disappoint you and grieve your holy spirit we allow distractions like iphones ipads computers and televisions to hinder us from spending time in your presence father we often use our gifts and talents not for your glory but to claim glory for ourselves in this pandemic season god we neglect to pray our tithes and offerings we repent of these and other shortcomings father we ask you to forgive us Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Father, we thank you for being our refuge and our strength in time of trouble. We thank you for being our rock and fortress. We thank you, dear God, for being our comforter, our provider, our protector, our hope. Most of all, we thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our salvation. We pray for our families and families of all over the world, especially those who are separated for reasons beyond their control in this pandemic. Grant them your peace, Lord, and help them to feel your presence. We pray for the spiritual, physical, and mental well-being of our Bishop Derek Richards, all ministers, lay persons, leaders, technical teams, and all other persons who help in ensuring that we are spiritually fed. Lord God, cover them with your precious blood of protection in the name of Jesus. Grant them traveling mercies as they travel to, the, to and from the churches. Father, let your holy angels protect them as they do your service in the church in the name of Jesus. 
We pray for the sick at home and in institutions. Lord God, you are the great physician. Visit them and let them feel your healing touch in the name of Jesus. We pray for those who are unemployed and are unable to meet the basic needs of their families. Father God, stir up in them creative imaginations so that they would find ways to earn. We pray for our Prime Minister, Governor General, Minister of Health, and Minister of Education and all in authority. We pray for their, that your divine protection will rest on the frontline workers and all those who are so ably taking care of the sick. We pray, dear God, that you will continue to cover them with your precious blood of protection from the coronavirus and from all other diseases. Father, sustain their mental health in the name of Jesus. Father God, tonight we pray for the outpouring of your Holy Spirit's power on this devotion. We pray for a fresh anointing on the one who will bring the message and on all those who are participating. Open our hearts and minds that as we receive your word, our lives will be blessed and we will be a blessing to others. We ask you all these things in Jesus' precious name and for his sake. Amen. Psalm 64 Hear my voice, O God, in my complaint. Preserve my life from the dread enemy. Hide me from the secret plots of the wicked, from the scheming of evildoers. Who wet their tongues like swords, who aim bitter words like arrows. Shooting from the ambush at the blameless, they shoot suddenly and without fear. They hold fast to their evil purpose. They talk of laying snares secretly, thinking, who can see us? Who can search out our crimes? We have thought out a cunningly conceived plot, for the human heart and mind are deep. But God will shoot his arrow at them. They will be wounded suddenly. 
Because of their tongue, he will bring them to ruin. All who seek them will shake with horror. Then everyone will fear. They will tell what God has brought about and ponder what he has done. Let the righteous rejoice in the Lord and take refuge in him. Let all the upright in heart glory. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Let us pray. Protecting God, Lord God Almighty, who was, who is, and who is to come, whom have we in heaven but you? There is none on earth that we desire beside you. You are our strength and our portion forever. We are deeply grateful that you are our God. You have promised never to leave us nor forsake us but to be with us always, even to the end. And so, Lord God, we trust your word, that nothing can separate us from your love, which is in Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord and our Savior. We, however, confess that sometimes our hearts are filled with fear. As we look at the troubles and challenges in our world, as we are faced with disasters, and so we ask that you will increase our faith, that we may overcome our fears and meet every trying experience with confidence, confidence in you. Make your strength perfect in our weakness. Even now, O oh God, I pray that you will minister to our aching hearts, 
to our fearful spirits and give to us a word of hope and consolation and faith in Jesus. Uphold me now that I may proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord over all and above all. Let the words of my mouth and the reflections of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Brothers and sisters, perhaps you have heard it said, we are always in a crisis, just coming out of a crisis, or about to be in a crisis. So life seems to be. And this tests our faith, or confronts our faith. Sometimes that confrontation comes in the form of our hitting rock bottom. The author of the beautiful hymn we love to sing, It Is Well With My Soul, Horatio Spafford, had become all too familiar with tragedy by the time he composed the words of this hymn in 1873. Two years earlier had been a year of loss both personally and financially, for the Spafford family. Their two-year-old son died of pneumonia. And in October of that same year, the Great Chicago Fire put them on the brink of financial ruins as property that Horatio had invested in went up in flames. In the fall of 1873, Horatio, his wife Anna, and their four daughters planned to make their way to Europe to travel with the evangelist D.L. Moody. Horatio was delayed by business at the last moment. And the rest of his family continued on their journey with the hope that Horatio would join them in a few days. The story goes that about halfway through the voyage, their ship collided with another vessel in the North Atlantic. Early in the morning of November 22nd, the ship sank in 12 minutes and 226 of the 331 passengers and crew aboard that ship died in the wreck. Anna Spafford, the wife of Horatio, survived, but their four daughters perished. A sailor rowing a small boat over the spot where the ship went down spotted a woman floating on a piece of the wreckage. It was Anna, still alive. He pulled her into the boat and they were picked up by another vessel. Nine days later, which landed them in Wales. From there, she wired her husband a message which began, Saved alone, what shall I do? Mr. Spafford later framed the telegram and placed it in his office. As soon as Horatio received word of this tragedy, he took passage on the next boat he could board to join his grieving wife. With the ship about four days out, the captain called Spafford to his cabin and told him that they were over the place where his children went down. According to Bertha Spafford Vesper, a daughter born after the tragedy, Spafford wrote, It is well with my soul while on the journey. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrow like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, 
thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. How could one in the midst of such tragedy write this testament to faith in the living God? The Apostle Paul recounts in Philippians, I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low and I know how to, be, to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthened me. This secret of contentment, this secret of peace in all circumstances, Paul tells us, begins with looking to God who strengthens his people. The God who meets his people at their points of need. The God who picks up his people and carries them when they're unable to journey on their own. You see, my brothers and sisters, the world view of peace is different than the Christian view. And hopefully we as believers, we as Christians, will have a different view of peace and a different source of that peace than what the world has come to know. The world believes that peace comes from being in control, that peace comes from people of the world who are in control. And so you see, people of the world believe that if they can control the circumstances around them, if they can control the people around them, if they can control their things and other people's things, uh, this control will bring them peace. Jesus tells his disciples and all believers throughout the ages about the troubles we will have in this world. Jesus knew that the devil would try to create for us a false sense of peace through his agents and cohorts, through possessions and through our control of people and our control of things. And so Paul again echoes in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 5, let your forbearing spirit be known to all men, the Lord is near. In verse 6 he says, be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. So my brothers and sisters, in this message tonight, there are three things that I wish to share with us briefly. First of all, nothing in this world is secure, certain, or safe. I say that again. Nothing in this world is secure, certain, or safe. This ought to be fully obvious to all of us. We in the Caribbean are familiar with natural disasters. We have experienced in the past catastrophic hurricanes and storms resulting in floods and land slippages. We have had a in this part of the world, fires which have threatened the lives and property of individuals. We have had deadly earthquakes and volcanic eruptions which have caused death, displacement, fear, and anxiety. And each time we have held to our faith in the living God, each time we have held to a faith in a God who is able. Each time we have bounced back, each time we have shown such resilience, such strength, such determination to get up, each time we have been knocked down, we have gotten up, we have picked up the pieces, we have 
picked each other up. We have stood on the word of God. We have stood on the promises of God and we have gotten up. But the point is tonight that we cannot take refuge in this world or in the things of this world. We cannot hold to the things of this world for security because there is nothing that is certain or safe in this world. And so it reminds us that we need to ensure that our eyes are always on the things of God, that we have our priorities right, that it is God first, that it is our salvation, our spiritual lives, our well-being in the Lord, the kingdom of God first. And that is why Jesus says, seek First, the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So often we have it the other way around, where we seek first the kingdoms of this world and then God. But Jesus says, seek God first, because nothing in this world is secure, certain, or safe. The second thing that I want to say to you tonight, my brothers and sisters, is that there will be no end of evil on this side of eternity. Many of us have lived in a self-created bubble of false security where we could watch the troubles of this world while thinking, that could never happen to me. No one can say that anymore. Many persons around my age would have heard the stories of the 1979 Lassofre volcanic eruption, but never thought that we would have ever lived to experience an eruption ourselves. Many of us have lived in a self-created bubble of false security where we watch the troubles of this world, and somehow we think that that will never happen. My brothers and sisters, life has taught us that we cannot be certain about escaping anything in this life and in this world. So there will be no end of struggles on the side of eternity. There will be no end of challenges on the side of eternity. There is no guarantee that you will not be knocked down again and again. Even though you are a child of God, blood wash spirit filled believer it doesn't mean that you will not experience the valleys of the shadow of death however what we are assured of the good news is that we will never have to stand alone the good news is that we will not have to go through them alone the good news is that there is one who stands with us whose name is Jesus the good news is that that uh, the living God stands with us. Uh, Emmanuel, God, is with us. And so even though we go through hardship and tra- and struggles and, and challenging situations, we are never alone. The third thing, very quickly, is that God can bring beauty out of the ashes of tragedy, no pun here. God can bring beauty out of the ashes of tragedy. This is the positive side of all that has happened over the past three days. Our God is so great that even in the midst of all our challenges, the plans of God cannot be foiled. 
We have seen men and women who have been so selfless in their service, caring for the hurting, comforting the brokenhearted, donating food, water, toiletries. And so even in the midst of tragedy, even in the midst of a natural disaster, we have seen how God has raised up men and women who have gone into action, being the hands of Jesus, being the feet of Jesus, being the presence of Jesus in the midst of the storm, in the midst of the challenges. So hear the word of God. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge God and God will direct your path. Hear the word of God again. My flesh and my heart fail it. But God is the strength of my heart and my portion, all I need. Hear the word of God again, the Lord is my portion. Set my soul, therefore will I hope in God. Hear the word of God again, what shall we say? To these things, if God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but delivered him up, gave him up for all of us, how then shall he withhold any good thing from us? Shall he not with him also give us all things? Spafford wrote, though Satan should buffet, Though trials should come, let this bless assurance control that Christ has regarded my helpless estate and has shed his own blood for my soul. My sin, oh the bliss of this glorious thought. My sin not in part, but the whole is nailed to the cross and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, oh my soul. Oh Lord, haste the day. When my faith shall be sight, the clouds be rolled back as a scroll. The trump shall resound and the Lord shall descend. Even so, it is well with my soul. I pray that you may experience the peace of God. Even in the midst of what you are going through. Even in the midst of volcanic eruption, even in the midst of COVID-19, even in the midst of a financial crisis, even in the midst of our social challenges in this region, even in the midst of confrontation, even in the midst of pain, Hatch. God proves God's love for us. May God give you shalom, his peace. Be still and know that God is God. Amen.
right hand of God is pointing in our land, pointing the way we must go. So clouded is the way, so easily we stray, but we are guided by the right hand of God. The right hand of God is planting in our land, planting seeds of freedom, hope and love. In these Caribbean lands, let people all join hands and be one by the right hand of God. And now, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Amen. of our daily devotion. We trust it has been a blessing to you. Now together, let us hold fast to his word and may it dwell in all of us richly.